welcome to Mojo Plays. Today, we'll be looking at the hardest temple from every Zelda game. If there's a Zelda temple that made you grind your teeth that you're salty we didn't include on our list, venture down to our comments to share your frustrations. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Death Mountain, The Legend of Zelda. With a name like that, it certainly isn't going to be a walk in the park. Sometimes referred to as Level 9, Death Mountain is an enormous skull-shaped dungeon and the final level in the game, where players must defeat Ganon. Before you reach the swine, you need to explore 60 rooms full of the toughest enemies in the game. Hidden passages are tough to locate, and if you don't manage to find the silver arrows, you can forget about defeating Ganon. Trial and lots of error was the only way to navigate this labyrinth back in the day. While the internet has made Death Mountain less of a nightmare, it's still quite a hassle. Great Palace, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. Many classic Zelda fans would accuse this temple of being incorrectly named. The only thing great about it is how greatly frustrating it is. It has all the usual trappings of the toughest temples like instant death pits, a confusing design, and obnoxious enemies. Then there's the Thunderbird, which can only be defeated using a spell obtained through an obscure method. And, to top it all off, the final boss is Link's shadowy doppelganger, which will imitate your moves, making for a relentless fight that pretty much requires cheap tactics in order to win. Oh, and also, if you get a game over, you're sent back to the very beginning of the temple and lose the XP of your current level. Great. Man, NES games are hard. Ice Palace, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. This Dark World dungeon is the toughest for a plethora of reasons. Some of its enemies can only be defeated by certain weapons, there are a ton of block puzzles as well, and the entire layout can be difficult to wrap your head around. But all these issues are compounded by the fact that most of the floors in it are covered in ice, making your footing very unstable. Even something as simple as going down some stairs can become a Herculean task as you try to maneuver Link onto the exact pixels required. By the time you're done, you'll be thankful to be back on stable ground. Eagle's Tower, The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening. You'll need to soar where eagles dare to complete this temple. Even reaching Eagle's Tower is a chore, and the inside is just as torturous. There are pits aplenty to be found, as well as a ton of puzzles and traps, all of which makes navigation difficult. The most annoying of these obstacles involves knocking down large pillars with large iron balls. Losing them can be unfortunately easy, making this puzzle about as fun as eagle droppings. Speaking of which, you also battle the titular bird atop the tower, along with the skeletal rider mounted atop it. Many other dungeons in this game are considered fairly easy by Zelda standards, and this temple towers over all others in difficulty. Water Temple, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Well, obviously. The Water Temple from Ocarina of Time is positively infamous for its level of difficulty and frustration. The entire dungeon is built around raising and lowering water levels to reach new areas. This, combined with needing to pause every few seconds to put on the iron boots, means that it's incredibly easy to lose track of where you are and where you need to go next.
While the remake has alleviated these issues somewhat, the original game ensured that the Water Temple's reputation as a confusing, laborious maze has remained for decades. Oh, and you also have to fight Dark Link again, too. Great Bay Temple, The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. Yeah, they didn't learn their lesson about manipulating water, did they? The Great Bay Temple's central mechanic involves changing the direction water flows in the temple. However, even color-coding the pipes doesn't make it any easier to figure out which way it goes or what to do next. This makes things like finding all the stray fairies in the temple even more difficult. Plus, there's the whole three-day time limit inherent in the game, meaning you can't really explore at your own pace. The boss monster, the fish Georg, is easily frustrating too, particularly if you can't figure out its weakness or it keeps grabbing you. Jabu Jabu's Belly, The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. Yet another water dungeon, Jabu Jabu's Belly has the same central issue that the others do, changing the way water in the temple works. The interior of the Great Beast contains three different floors. However, you can only change the water levels of the dungeon on the third floor. This means you'll be backtracking frequently to complete all the puzzles, and with how slowly you swim in this game, it'll take you a long time. Unless you've got a guide or walkthrough handy, Jabu Jabu's Belly is bound to give even the most patient gamer a stomach ache. Sword and Shield Maze, The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. Fire and ice dungeons can both be troublesome to deal with, but the sword and shield maze combines both themes into one aggravating package. The floors of the ice section, shaped like a shield, are slick and will leave you struggling to find your feet. Meanwhile, the fire section, designed like a sword, is full of lava pits, spiky obstacles, and enemies, and a lot of tough jumps. No matter where you are in the dungeon, there's no place to relax. And by the time you're through, you'll be feeling frigid or fiery with frustration. Or both. Wind Temple, The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. Wind Waker may be bright and colorful, but that doesn't mean it can't be difficult. The Wind Temple is arguably the most taxing dungeon in the game. Built around a large, central shaft, it can be difficult to recall which floor you have visited already. Additionally, many of the puzzles require taking control of a partner character, Makar. Some enemies can snatch the little Korok away, making you backtrack to locate him. There are also some obtuse solutions to puzzles, and other design choices that don't feel as intuitive as other dungeons. While there are certainly breezes in the Wind Temple, it's anything but a breeze. Temple of Darkness, The Legend of Zelda, Four Swords Adventures. The last section of the Dark World, the Temple of Darkness lives up to its name. Visibility is low and dark throughout, which can make finding your way difficult. Solving puzzles and riddles in the dark is challenging enough, but you also need to contend with traps and tough enemies. Plus, if you're playing with more than one player, and Four Swords Adventures allows up to four, Keeping track of both yourself and your buddies can make the Temple of Darkness a gloomy time for all involved. <laughs> Palace of Winds, The Legend of Zelda, The Minish Cap. <laughs> Wind mechanics can make for some of the most difficult temples, as we've seen already. The Palace of Winds continues that trend, 
It's set high in the sky and features many pits to fall through while platforming. And thanks to the numerous fans dotted throughout, it can be easy to fall into them. While navigating these pitfalls, Link also has to contend with powerful enemies like Dark Nuts, Wizrobes, and Ball and Chain Soldiers. To top it all off, the boss battle features a mid-air fight on precarious footing. Out of all the dungeons in the Minish Cap, Palace of Winds is sure to take the wind out of your sails the most. City in the Sky, The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess. Continuing the airborne dungeon's trend, City in the Sky is also set among the clouds. While it's extremely cool in concept, given that you get the double claw shot allowing you to Spider-Man your way around on various objects and creatures, it's also pretty confusing. City in the Sky is a big place, and having to think vertically and horizontally to get around takes some getting used to. This is particularly demanding in the boss fight against a huge armored dragon. But the toughest thing about this dungeon is resisting the urge to run from those human-faced chicken people. Ugh, creepy. <laughs> Temple of the Ocean King, The Legend of Zelda, Phantom Hourglass. Man, I hate this place. Most Zelda dungeons are complete once Link goes through them the first time. Not so with the Temple of the Ocean King. Link needs to explore this temple at least five times. Not only that, but being inside the temple drains everyone of their health. While the game's titular item, the Phantom Hourglass, lets you stay in for longer and longer times without taking damage, and thus exploring more of it, it's still a huge pain every time. Each time, you have to deal with more obnoxious puzzles and enemies. And did we mention there's a stealth element? If you get hit by one of these enemies, you have to start your floor over. It's like they combined every annoying dungeon mechanic into one location. <laughs> Tower of Spirits, The Legend of Zelda, Spirit Tracks. Like the previous entry, the Tower of Spirits is a centralized dungeon that must be revisited several times throughout the game. It does feature some improvements, like being able to skip over previously played sections and using new items to progress further into it. However, it has its own issues. Its particular thing is that you must possess various phantom knights to perform specific tasks. Controlling other characters often adds to confusion in dungeons, and this case is no exception. In addition, the Tower of Spirits is just long, with 30 floors in total. Sure, you don't go through them all at once, but it does wear on you after a while. Sky Keep. The Legend of Zelda, Skyward Sword. The last dungeon of the game, Sky Keep, is one of the more unique temples in the whole Zelda franchise. While it lacks a final boss, that's not where its difficulty lies. Sky Keep has rooms themed after each other dungeon in the game, though some mix and match elements from more than one. While it will certainly test your knowledge of everything in the game that came before, it's less the content of the rooms and more what the rooms are built around. You see, in order to navigate between them, the entire dungeon essentially functions as a massive sliding puzzle. Sure, you can complete the rooms in any order, but it's still maddeningly easy to lose your way. Dark Palace, The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds. While not the only temple on our list themed after darkness, Dark Palace truly runs with the concept and jumps into a pit. The dungeon has precious little light, forcing you to carry your own. 
except many rooms require going without light to get clues or methods to progress. <laughs> Then there's the occasions where you need to use another weapon for something, only to get hit by an enemy or obstacle because you couldn't see it coming. To some degree, Dark Palace is like walking a tightrope in the dark with spikes underneath you. Possible, but by no means fun. Hinox Mine, The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes. Triforce Heroes isn't the most popular Zelda title, but those who have played it know the frustration of the Hinox Mine. Most of the dungeon consists of minecart tracks over lava. Switches need to be hit to progress, and that's always tricky while in motion. Timing is key, and not everybody is so gifted in that area. This is particularly obvious when playing in co-op mode with other players, as the difficulties of the Hinox Mine can be either made easier or more difficult depending on the skill level of your partners. Yiga Clan Hideout, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Most of Breath of the Wild's dungeons are fairly easy and straightforward, likely because of the open-world nature of the game and how you've been taught to use its physics-based mechanics. It makes going to any one of them first a simple matter. However, that's what makes the Yiga Clan hideout so difficult by comparison. It's essentially an extended stealth sequence, in which Link must sneak past the guards to reach the final area and the boss. However, that's easier said than done. A single hit from any of the big Yiga guards will cause a game over and force you to restart the entire hideout. If you're as stealthy as a Hinox, be prepared for pain. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, there's more where that came from.